Oh, you're not ready to go. Oh, <laughs> you. Okay, that's the second joke this morning. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting it today. This is what happens when my husband isn't here. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> yeah, I ordered him to rest. He reluctantly did so, but, you know, he'd start talking. I'd go, I get to boss you around now. This is fun. <laughs> so it's a one time, okay? Okay, um, you want to go ahead and share what God has been doing for you. And if, you, if any of you feel prompted by the Spirit, um, just come up and get in line. I apologize for the dad jokes today. My daughter hasn't been around lately, so I got to use them on somebody. Um, I'm honored to have this opportunity to share my testimony. Um, uh, let me start. I don't want to take too much time, but I want to go back to... Uh, where it all started. It started with my drinking. Um, I was 18, going to college back in 1993. And then alcohol took over the rest of my life for 17 years. Um, during that time, 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with MS multiple sclerosis. Um, I've lived with that for 20 years. I've been taking treatments for that for 20 years. For 20 years I've been grateful and thanking God that I can I can walk and I can still use everything I need to use and I've always just had some like Felt like my hand was asleep, you know, and pins and needles. And sometimes I would drop things and not even realize it. But it could have been a whole lot worse. Um, that was 20 years. And then like 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes. Um, my glucose level stayed so high that I had to take insulin shots every meal, three or four times a day. Um, also, like one long lasting, long acting shot once a day, uh, two or three pills a day. Um, just loaded up with medication. And I'm still here to tell you today that God delivered me from that alcohol after 17 years Hallelujah. of being bound. <laughs> and I, I thank you, Jesus, for it that, you know, I was blind, I was lost, and I was still living with MS, still living with diabetes, and I felt like I lived in sin for so long that I just, I was thankful I was delivered from alcohol. I can settle with that, right? I'm, I'm happy with that. But on November 5th, there was a message that Pastor Holly gave on uh, Kings 18, verse 41. Do you mind if I read that real quick? Um, Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked, and he said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. On the seventh time, his servant came back and said, there is a small cloud the size of a man's hand rising out of the sea. Elijah said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. And now it had happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. 
it was during this message, the Lord started speaking to my heart. Why have you settled for living for 20 years with the MS? Why are you settling for living with diabetes for 10 years? I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are mine, and I have more for you today. You take this to the altar today. And that's the first time I ever felt God speak to my heart like that. So, like, I was just overwhelmed I, with the tears and the crying. I couldn't get a word out. I couldn't speak. And I had to, I had to type it down on my phone to show Pastor Adam that, I'd like to go up for prayer because I couldn't say it to him. <laughs> it just wouldn't come out. So uh, I came up for prayer that day, and uh, when everybody was praying over me up here, I just, I just got a warm rush of, like, healing. It felt like healing flowed over me. And uh, since that day... I left in the mindset that I'm going to keep praying, I'm going to keep believing, and if I have to, I'm going to keep going back and keep going back seven times until the rain comes. And I cut my medications in half, my MS medication. I'm I'm experiencing very little symptoms of the MS that I experienced for 20 years. Um, my, my diabetic medication, I went from all of the shots I was taking every day down to one pill a day and one long, one long lasting insulin. And I've still been keeping the same levels of glucose. So, um, I just wanted to share that and give all the glory to God and praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that awesome? So God is doing amazing things. He's doing amazing things. Even when we started um, last week, you know, when he led us to do, um, you know, a seven-day fast, he led us to do that and, and, and spoke to us very clearly. You know, just like my husband said last week, we're going to be a rejoice always church. We're going to be a pray continually church. Pray always, pray continually. We're going to be, you know, this and this. And the Lord, you know, had quickened that to me. We're going to be a fasting church. We're going to do exactly what the Bible says. And we, as we are led by the Lord, you know, this is kind of like dipping our toes in, you know, this. Yet last year, I did, a, I did a 21-day fast with my daughter. There was powerful things that happened during that, amazing things. There were things that I would pray in the morning, and I'd get the answer at night. I mean, it was amazing. But um, now we're just kind of, you know, throughout the year, we'll do, you know, a little fast here and there, and um, as the, the Spirit leads it up. And we are going to see powerful breakthroughs. We're going to see powerful things take place. And so just exciting. Does anyone else have anything? <laughs> I'm not looking at. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. It is testimony time. So, you know, we got to have some testimonies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is alive, isn't he? Brother, that's powerful, man. That's so good. Turn to somebody around you and say, Jesus is alive. So good to see you all this morning. I wanted to share something real quick, you know, uh, this church supports us. I'm Jeremy Gall. Those of you who don't know me, I'm an evangelist. My wife Jocelyn's here. She's back there. Wave Jocelyn. And uh, we've been traveling full time 20 years. Almost as long as we've been traveling, we've been coming to this church. I think like at, at year one or two, we start, you know, started working with you guys. And uh, man, hallelujah. How many believe it? How many believe that the Jesus that we serve is exactly the same today as when he walked the shores of Galilee? Amen. He still opens blind eyes and deaf ears and causes lame legs to walk and hallelujah, <laughs> greater than diabetes and MS, amen, greater than addiction, praise God, and he is a good savior. Uh, last month, we were ministering in Youngstown at Mary Hall's Church, uh, um, Fifth Avenue Community Church in Youngstown, if any of you are familiar with Youngstown, and uh, it's a four-square church. 
And there was a woman there who, when she was, she was in her 40s now, and when she was 11 years old, she fell down a garbage chute and messed up her neck, and she had been in pain since she was 11, and now she's in her 40s. And instantly, hallelujah, she was pain-free, able to move her neck, able to move her shoulders, as we prayed for in the name of Jesus after 30-some-odd after years. Amen? Same service. Uh, there was a woman who was in a car accident, what was it, Jocelyn, 20 years ago. And uh, she, she had not been able to bend her knees or she couldn't, um, what was it, bend and... Yeah. Yeah, numb. Yeah, yeah, praise God. So she couldn't bend uh, her, you heard, I'm sure you guys heard that, right? So limited reign, 20 years, everybody say 20 years. And instantly prayed for her in the name of Jesus. She started instantly bending, first time in 20 years. She said she had feeling in her leg, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Doesn't that sound just like Jesus, though? Doesn't that sound just like what he's like, Amen. And I just wanted to take a second and share some encourage you this morning. Listen, whenever you hear a testimony like that, never think, oh, that's for somebody else. That's, that's you know, that's, that's for, that's somebody, no, that's not me. No, that's for every one of his children. Amen. Everybody say, it's for me. It's for me. And I share these testimonies for that reason, that every one of you would walk out of this place and say, yeah, that's my Jesus. That's the Jesus that I serve. There's nothing in my life, praise God, no work of the devil that could stand against his power, against his name like we sang this morning. Amen? Amen. Everybody say, I'm free, I'm free. because of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. That was a little teaser because we're going to have them in here soon. <laughs> we're gonna have, we've, we've talked to them before, but... Um, yeah, we, we met for, with them, I don't know when it was, and we had some food. <laughs> we met and had some food. And um, we had such a good time just chatting and talking about the things of the Lord and everything. So um, that is so encouraging. Thank you for sharing that. Um, is there anyone else, there's anyone else that has any testimony, any testimony? Oh, Emma? Wait, come on. <laughs> I am trying to keep you here all day. So, you know, like everyone can share. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. As you know, I'm Emma, and I just wanted to share a quick uh, testimony. I know um, Charlotte asked me a while ago about the fasting. So, when we had that last uh, Sunday night about fasting, and I've been wanted to do this one because I've been like, um, this, I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> our pastor that, uh, you know, do the fasting. And I'm like, I wanted to do it. I, w I wanted to do fasting. And uh, every time I pray at home, and um, when I pray at home, I can do it like from the, in the morning. I just like uh, drink water, and then I, I can do it until 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. So when they told us that we're going to do fasting, that uh, Tuesday, so I started it because I, I wanted to push it like until five o'clock. So I did that day, Tuesday, <clears throat> and until now. And if it's worship service every day, every morning, I have to eat because I don't want, you know, I want, I don't want my belly to get, you know, I feel like growing <laughs> and hungry. So I didn't do that one today. So it's just water, and I keep doing it. So it was Tuesday. Um, we, we started Tuesday, and then Thursday, sometimes you wanted to pray for yourself, but the Holy Spirit will guide you, will guide you, and I'm, you know, like, sometimes, like, the name of the people, he would tell me who I'm going to pray, so I know I didn't tell Charlotte, but Dale, I saw Dale, I was, like, walking in her hallway, and then I just went to the kitchen, and I was like, I'm cooking, because I, 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 I read, I have a book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. That was Pastor Craig gave it to me, and I'm reading that one. And I noticed that I'm becoming more patient in reading, and I'm not good in, you know, reading Bibles. And I don't know that, because my church before, we don't read Bible, we, I don't hold Bible, I don't. You know, I don't know scriptures, but sometimes it would just show me scriptures. So that day, I was like walking, and I already done, and I said, done for 
for my praying, my reading books, and then it would go to the scriptures and reading Bibles. And you don't feel hungry when you're fasting. That's what I noticed. You don't feel hungry. You just wanted to like dig to the Bible and like read and read and read. And it's just amazing feeling and it would be more peaceful. So when, I, when after that, I said like, my husband's going to come home two o'clock and I have to cook dinner. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to stop for a while and I'm going to go cook dinner. From the whole way, I was walking and then I'm starting walking and then Dale... It just like I saw his face like smiling and you know we never talk a lot Dale so and then after that okay Holy Spirit I said you wanted to you want me to pray for Dale so I was just kneeling in the kitchen and praying for for him and then after that you know then it's showing me like like neck praying for the neck like that and you know, the cancer, the diabetes, like that. So sometimes you wanted to pray for yourself, but the Holy Spirit is just guiding you who to pray. And I just wanted to share that. And now I'm still continuing fasting, and I'm going to finish that one. I thought it was Tuesday, but it's going to be tomorrow. And I'm going to be happy because I'm going to eat normal after tomorrow. Thank you. Just Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's so good. Oh, uh, are you sure? Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, is there anyone else? Anybody else? Oh, uh, see? I knew, just wait another minute. <laughs> oh. I don't even know what I'm going to do, okay? Because I love the Lord so much. Amen. It's just part of my life every day. Every day. Oh, I hate those things. <laughs>
When we will need to break some umbilical cords, some, some stuff over mm. our lives. Mm. We come as a church, as a body. Oh, you. Mm. Why not? Mm. Mm. Sometimes you just go down and say, hey, be done with it. Let's, let's take it from here. <laughs> yeah. Take a shot. Give an excuse. Yeah. Even if you stand in front of us yeah. and have a new anointing, the question is, mm. but he said, I invite that into this church, mm. into the body. Because yeah. if we Amen. all do, Amen. who knows what we're sharing with you. Hallelujah. I like this. This is fun. You know we can have fun in church. Yeah, we can. Um, when I was preparing, it, the Lord will drop some things, you know, on my heart, but he'll make me laugh, you know, sometimes, and he'll bring up different things, and I was going to go there. Actually, I won't tell you what he, <laughs> what, what he, he drops silly things in, on, my, on my heart, and I'll just start laughing out loud. Because he knows how to speak to me. He knows, um, you know, what to say and how to do it. And I'm like, this is fun. I'm like, Lord, it, it, to walk with you, yeah, there's hard moments. But he is amazing. God is amazing. And to walk with him is absolutely amazing. And it's fun. See, this is fun. We're laughing. So joy of the Lord is your strength. So um, we're going to go ahead and if there's no one else, uh, we're going to go ahead and go right into uh, tithe and offering, and then I'll have uh, Stuart come up and do communion, and then we'll jump into the Word. And I really promise, I will try to promise not to keep you here very long, especially if it's snowing. <laughs> All right, why don't you go and, uh, go ahead and stand up. Um, one thing I want to share really fast. Oh, yes. Um, did Adam, did he, he mention that on the video? Okay. So... Um, with the tithing envelopes, uh, there is a tithe number. You might be able to explain this better than I can. But what, what we're asking is that you put the tithing number and your name on the envelope because uh, Penelope um, is not being able to get statements out, right? Is that what you were? Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you did you all hear that that the website is down right now if you try to give on the website. So um, this is this is what oh not this sorry the tithing envelope wherever I put that um, yeah just the tithing envelope. So um, let's go ahead and pray, and then you can come up and bring your uh, tithe and offering. Father, I just thank you so much that um, we have the privilege to give, to sow, Lord, and to give back to you. Uh, Lord, we love you so much, and we do this cheerfully today. God, I ask for uh, you bless each person today as they go forth and take that step of faith and even go beyond that in what you're asking them to do. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
And actually, when you go ahead, go ahead and stay up here. Um, since we're going to do communion right now instead of at the end, um, you know, usually on this side, we come on this side and on this side, this side. I always say it wrong, right, left. <laughs> said if you want to receive communion and you're able please come forward and um, Charlotte's over here Deanne's over here oh, thank you If you could go ahead and just take the bread part out, because um, I'm going to break this down into two. Um, you said something earlier about coming to church is not just a ritual. It's not just something we do to check off. Likewise with communion. Holy communion is not a ritual to be observed, but a blessing to be received. So we've all heard, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. We've heard these words many times, but did you know those words were commonly used in Jesus' day as part of a wedding ceremony? And everybody go, say what? Okay. So the man in this ceremony was saying to the woman, eat this bread it re represents how i pledge my body and my life to you my solemn promise to you is that i will protect you defend you and provide for you i give my body to you so the disciples having heard these words at weddings many times were no doubt puzzled when the master used them with no bride or groom or wedding party in sight they were not puzzled after Jesus left them, though. Just before he ascended in a cloud to heaven, he promised something else with the words, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus Christ is our husband. He's our provider, our protector, our shield, our shelter. This bread that we eat is his promise to us, his covenant guarantee. By this bread, he says, I do. So everybody hold it up. As we take this bread today, I'd like to hear each of you say these words. I do, Jesus. with the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus. His blood redeems us. His blood brings us into fellowship with God. His blood makes peace with God. His blood cleanses. His blood gives power over the devil. As you heard her, Penelope said, it's the blood that Satan fears. In Revelation 12, 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So then taking the cup of wine, this is the translate, the TPT version. Then taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks to the father. He entered into covenant with them saying, this is my blood. Each of you must drink it in fulfillment of the covenant. For this is the blood that seals the new covenant. It will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. Go ahead and drink. Thank you, Lord. So good. So much power 
in these things that we're doing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, just, I just got the cue because my husband said earlier about the children because that video, maybe he thought the video was going to be later. But um, right now, we're going to go ahead and dismiss the children to go to their class. Let's pray over them and bless them before they go. Let's just reach our, our hands out to If you see any children near you, just reach out your hands to them. Father, we thank you right now for what you are doing in the children in this house. Lord, we thank you that you are speaking to them, that their ears are open to your voice, that they are following you, Lord, and that they are coming alive in their life to your word, Lord, the word that is being taught, and, and Lord, that it's falling on good ground. We thank you right now, Lord, that you just bless them today, bless them abundantly, and their teachers as well. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. All of my children are at home with my husband. <laughs> they're, yes, they're taking care of their father, making sure that he sits and rests. No, I'm kidding. I don't have to do that. I just joke about it. Um, you know, one thing I was going to mention earlier is, uh, uh, I don't know, what was it on Friday? Friday, uh, my husband and I, part of this fast, you know, we're doing this fast, and um, we ended up, you know, we get up in the morning and um, spend time in the Word, you know, and, and take time to do that and with the Lord. And uh, we both got up and started talking at, I think it was like 6.45 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know about you, like the married couples, you know, in here. I don't remember the last time we, we talked for eight hours. I mean, it was about eight hours. I don't remember the time, the last time that we did that, but it was so rich. And we didn't even know the time was going by. I mean, honestly, we were just sitting there and we were sharing and sharing about the things of the Lord. And we, we needed that time. The kids were good. I mean, that was like, <laughs> usually, you know, you, you have some interruptions, you know, mom, so-and-so, you know, whatever they're doing. And, um, but they, that whole entire time, I don't think that we had any interruptions. They just played and and they were really good, and we got to talk. So that was, that was really amazing, and it was really good for us. So that's part of our breakthrough. I mean, we have other things that are happening too, but that was awesome. So it is a joy to be able to speak to you today. Yesterday, when I found out that I was going to speak today, you know, how many of you know we have to be ready in and out of season, right? We have to be ready at any moment. And so I, I wasn't positive that I was going to step in. My husband could barely speak. But, you know, I went right into the bedroom and said, okay. I said, Lord, I'm not going to try to produce anything. Do you, do you have something? Do you, do you want me to speak? Right away. <laughs> you know, things just started coming. I go, okay. Went right back out. Yes, I'm doing this. So I am excited to share what the Spirit has put on my heart to share today. You know, we've been talking about testimonies today, and we've been opening that up more. But um, there, I do have a word to share that he's spoken to me that I'm going to deliver that I've been sitting on for quite some time and just praying into as he's been is showing me things. But um, I just want to start with first uh, kind of sharing a quick testimony of how we were called to Ohio. I know many of you probably know this story. I mean, some of you may not. Let's see, I see heads that are shaking, and that's good because um, – I, I felt that that was the case when the Lord put that on my heart, is that some of you might have heard a little bit, but, but not all of it. So, and I not, will not share every single detail because there is a lot. <laughs> Charlotte, you know I could talk. I could share and go into the evening, and we could be here for a long time. So, I will try to keep it uh, short and sweet. Uh, so, many of you know we were called to Ohio by God. And... Um, we were serving with some friends in Yakima, Washington. We lived in Washington State. We were serving with some friends at a church. Um, we were associate pastors there. This church was thriving. The Holy Spirit was moving on a regular basis, basis and moving powerfully. We were seeing, um, you know, all these things happen. It was very powerful. I started a Bible study in my home, and um, some some of the 
uh, girls that were coming to this Bible study um, just had, you know, some of them had uh, just come out of drugs. You know, they had been in jail, you know, different things like that. So the Holy Spirit was just, he was moving powerfully. It was exciting. It was wonderful. And so uh, things were going smoothly. But how many of you know that in the midst of things like that, sometimes God comes in when he wants to do something in you, he shakes things up a bit, right? <laughs> so things, th- things started kind of shaking up a bit, things that we were not expecting. And um, we found out that the house that we were living in, um, the, the, our, we were renting from the owners and they came and said that they were going to put it up on the market. They were going to put it up for sale. And we had a short time. This was during when COVID started. So we had a very short time. How many of you know when you have a very short time, you know, you start praying like your life depended on it. Yeah, I know. I, we were like, okay, we only have a short time to make this decision. Um, God knew this was going to happen. But then we were pressing in immediately. Okay, what, what do we need to do? Um, we were not in a financial place to be able to purchase a home because of the COVID, you know, what, what was going on in COVID. There were a few rentals. Um, one of which we could have taken. So, but we, we wanted God's highest and best. We don't want second, third, you know. We want God's highest and best. If you're going to be praying for a spouse, you know, some of you are already married, some of you are not. If you're going to pray for a spouse, do you want second and third and fourth best? You want God's highest and best, and you want to wait on the Lord for that. And that's what we were doing in the situation, is we wanted God's highest and best, and we didn't want to settle. So another option came up. Um, My parents offered to have us stay at their house, and their house was up on a mountain out in the boonies. So here we know we're in church, and I'm in worship. We're doing all this stuff, and and, um, that was not the most appealing choice for someone who was in their late 30s I might have just exposed my age, but someone who is in their late 30s with five children to move back and live with your parents, right? I, I, that was not a thrilling option for me. So when my husband came in, you know, we're praying about it. My husband came in and he said, you know, I think that we're done in Yakima. I think uh, that, that God has lifted. And I went, uh, no, no. You know, I kind of go into denial mode sometimes. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I go, no, 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 we're not dead in Yakima. We're cold. Nope, mm, nope, I'm not going to hear that. And this, is hap- this has happened multiple times. You think I learned my lesson. But I was like, no, no, everything's going really well. How in the world could, we, could God be having us be done here? There's, there's no way. You know, we've only been here. We just got back from Oklahoma. We moved to Oklahoma for Bible school. And then God, we stayed there for that time, but then God released us to come back. And, I, you know, we were, we were ready to stay there for a while. And so that was not my first choice. I was holding on tightly and um, did not, I wanted things to go my way, basically. But again, we wanted God's highest and best. And so we took the step of faith. It was another opportunity to trust God. So we took that step of faith and we moved in with my parents and we lived there for six months. Now, it was a gift from God. It was absolutely amazing. I was a little nervous. You know, um, I love my parents, but I thought, oh no. You know, I'm thinking about cooking in the kitchen with my mother. You know, we can butt heads sometimes. We are close, but you know, that th- there's other... <laughs> There's other aspects to that. And so um, I was a little bit nervous, but it was so amazing. I mean, there were times God did such amazing things while we lived um, with my parents. And Adam was still working in Yakima. He had to commute. He was staying in a hotel, and he had to commute back and forth. Sometimes he was there for a week. But um, as we were praying, you know, about what God wanted us to do, we just... Um, God just refreshed us. Like we, we grew too. It was an opportunity to grow. God did things. He taught us things. But um, my parents, we just had so much fun. I mean, sometimes my parents, uh, I grew up Baptist. So there's a lot of things that I, <laughs> oh, you know, the joy of the Lord, you know, laughter, tongues, all that kind of stuff. No, not really a part of, of what we did. But God just, he started doing things in uh, my parents' house while we were living there. And um, 
in our relationship. And sometimes my mom and I would sit on the couch and the joy of the Lord would hit us and we'd start laughing. And my dad would sit over in his chair because my dad, this is one story I love, but my dad would sit over his chair and he'd, you know, he usually have a serious look on his face, you know, and he'd be looking down at his computer. And when the joy of the Lord hit, he couldn't resist. It was so fantastic. And it was sneaky because he didn't even know what was going on. I mean, it's not like I had to go, Dad, this is, you know what's going on here? You know, because I, you know, I like to narrate sometimes. You know what's going on here? I'm going to teach. This is the joy of the Lord. No, we just sat there and laughed. And the Lord's like, watch, watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing right now in the, in the home. And my dad would start laughing. And I'm not seeing him do this. And then he'd, he'd try to get it together. I mean, he was, uh, I mean, he'd sit over there. He'd go, he'd go, Holly. Oh. And I'd go, it's not me. You know, and so we just, I mean, we were, I was snoring. I mean, I was, we were laughing, 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 laughing. And it was the joy of the Lord. And he just, he would just keep going. So it was so much fun. I mean, there were just so many fun moments at my parents' house. So that was a gift because God knew where he was going to call us next. And so as we prayed, um, it became clear, you know, while we were living at my parents' house, at the same time, our friends moved to Ohio, to here to, here to Ohio. And they took over um, being uh, head pastors at a church. And while we were at my parents' house, they offered us the associate pastorship at this church. And um, still, we were thinking, you know, my parents had offered us a piece of land on their, they have all this property. They had offered us land. We love it in the country, love it in the mountains. Um, and we thought maybe we were going in that direction, but God began to speak to us and, and show us, no, nope. do, do you want my highest? Do you want my best? And so we begin to um, say yes to him. You know, like many of you have done this morning, even in saying yes to God and sharing your testimonies, but we said yes. That's something we want, we've learned is say yes to the Lord and be obedient to him when he says some, to do something. So we uh, said yes to that. Well, we first we came and moved. I mean, not moved. We came to visit. And when we were here visiting, God made it very clear. And he spoke to us very clearly. And then over the month, next months as we were preparing, because we knew, we already knew that we knew when we came back home after we visited that we were, going to, we were going to move, and this is what he wanted us to do. But how many of you know that God confirms his word when you ask him to confirm? When he tells you to do something, um, ask him to confirm it. He loves to confirm his word, and he confirmed it over and over. We got words. We had all these things um, told to us, and we were very confident. So <clears throat> we pulled up stakes and moved here in June 2021, and there is much more that has happened in between that time that I could go into, um, but that is for another time and for, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we have many, many stories, but God led us up to where we are right now, where we are here, and he's been so faithful to us, even when we didn't understand. We, there were times we didn't understand what was happening, but we still said, yes, Lord, we're going to keep obeying her, to keep walking in, in where you're leading us. So, um, in this time, he began to show us different things about Ashtabula County and the people within our sphere of influence. So that's what I want to talk to you about today is something that pertains to our county as well as you personally. And this is some things that the Lord has been showing us. Um, yesterday, when I went in to spend time with the Lord and just sit there and listen, um, the Lord said, I, this is what I heard. Awaken you who slumber and sleep. I'm awakening you to me. And I was immediately reminded by the Spirit, something that he spoke a couple weeks ago. He showed me a picture of Jesus being the kinsman redeemer. And he showed me a picture. Many of you have pictures, um, visions, pictures. But in, this was just a quick picture. I was just sitting with the Lord. And I, I probably was, I think I was praying. It was in, in intercession, you know, for the city, for what God, what are you doing? What's happening? And um, I, he gave me this picture of Sleeping Beauty, right? Just a quick, you all know Sleeping Beauty, you know, the <laughs> Disney character. And um, it was kind of funny. It was really quick. And <clears throat> Jesus was leaning over. And I, I immediately had the image of Jesus breathing on those who are asleep and awakening them. And that reminded me. Um, another scripture that came up with that was Psalm 147, 18. He causes his wind to blow. And he showed me, uh, as, he, as I was 
uh, praying into this. He's already been showing things along the way. We've, got, we've gotten things along the way, but there's a timing to everything. Even this last Sunday, I wanted to share some of this. I thought, oh, we're going into the new year, you know, and surely this is the moment. And I, I look down and the spirit goes, mm, nope, not yet. He does that. He says, wait, wait, no, don't, don't do it yet. It's not the right timing. At the right timing, because he, he is, he's so good. There's a story unfolding. Like right now, even um, all of you who sit in here, you're part of a story. God's writing a story right now. And it's unfolding every single week as we get together. There's, there's things that he says that we need to hear that's part of the story. Um, so, you know, if we miss church, I know there's sometimes we, we do miss church, right? Okay. But um, he's uncovering things. He's showing us things right now, and it's really exciting, and we need to be a part of that, and we need to be in it and be focused. So um, he showed me that, and he also showed me that many times that, or me, many times that people need to be awakened to truth, to the truth. That's something that he's doing. They need to be reminded of who their creator is and who they were always intended to be as his creation. He has given many words of confirmation and countless verses to confirm this. How he wants to restore sleeping ones back to what he has originally intended. I have personally felt and heard the cries of people in my prayer and in, in other times where the Lord has allowed me to feel as I'm praying. I have felt their loneliness, fear, anxiety, depression, shame, doubt, poverty, and so on. Satan will do whatever he can to get people to forget their identity, right? He has brought lies and confusion. And how many of you know this happens in our life all the time? He has tried to lull many with apathy and laziness. But I want to tell you that God is saying now the same thing he said in Isaiah 51, 52, 1. Awake, awake. That's what he said. This, was, this is the title of this message is awake. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Ashtabula and uh, Holly, you know, say your name, put your name in there. The awakening God showed me is not just a call to those who are truly asleep. They've never come alive. To, they, they've never received Jesus. They've never come alive. They've never received that gift like many of us have. But it's also to us who have been walking through life kind of like zombies, right? How many of you know you can get into that, um, things hit you, things happen, and then you start thinking, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted. Then the enemy will put something else in there. Oh, I'm, I'm so, oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm, and you start forgetting. All the lies come in. And you start coming under those lies, believing those lies, and you're not, you're not alert. You're starting to get a little, you know, uh, you know I was, I, I, the only way I could put it there was like zombies. <laughs> but, you know, just kind of like um, you're not really awake. You're not really awake and alert. And that takes a choice too. Even when you wake up in the morning, no matter how many hours of sleep you got, no matter what happened. You know, even on the way to church this morning, the Spirit was doing that. Because the lie that can come into your head immediately is, you know, you can hear these things. And I'll expose it. I'll expose it. Um, you're so tired. You only got, how many hours of sleep did you get? Oh, you didn't get eight hours of sleep? Mm, you're going to have a bad day. You, are, you got four hours? Oh, you're going to have a bad day. And so the, the enemy is already creating a script for you to walk out for the day. Even though God has good things for us to walk in, he said that he has ordained for us to walk in good things before the beginning of the world. If you will receive that narrative of the enemy, the enemy, what he's telling you and the lies, it's just lies. If you receive that, you'll start walking in it. You will live under it and you'll believe that and you'll forget who you are. And so that is something that he was that he's been speaking about. This is all changing. God is calling his sleeping people to awake, arise, and follow him. Many of you are already, it's already happening. It's already happening. Where 
oh, wow, what have I been doing? What have I been doing? God, I'm, and you're awakening to things and you're realizing things and the light is coming and that's going to continue. He showed me a vision. This is really powerful. Um, I was sitting one day praying, and this has been a while too. I mean, the last couple of years, he's spoken a lot about identity, and that's something that's very close to Adam and I's heart and that he's, he's been speaking about. But he showed me a vision of a giant crown. I just remembered I didn't bring my crown in as a prop. But he showed me a vision of a giant crown settling onto this city as though he was crowning this region with royalty. And it was, I mean, I've, I've never seen that before. He's spoken to me in my own life about identity and the robes of righteousness, the crown of glory. He's spoken to me. But all of a sudden, I was seeing it for the entire, like, the, this huge crown just settling in and what he's doing and what he's doing for us personally as well. He showed me that as he restores the identity of this region, its people will burn like a lamp shining with his glory. I saw flames coming out of that crown. First, it was just the crown. I camped on that for a while. Just, you know, kept it. When you get something from the Lord, you don't go, you know, be careful. Sometimes you just need to wait if you don't have the full revelation yet. And you just continue to ask and pray until he releases you to do that. But then yesterday as I was praying, the, the flames were coming out of it. And I was like, ooh, that's really good. Because he's been talking about a lamp burning and the brightness and all of that. He showed me that he's, so I'm going to read that again. He showed me that as he restores the identity of this region, its people will burn like a lamp shining with his glory. This is what he intends for this region. But the enemy has done a very effective job of oppressing and depressing this region. And as generation passes to generation, it has become the way of this land to live under satanic depression, but God's crown is settling and God's light is coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So one thing, you know, as, as I'm... Um, the Lord was showing me this, and he's been showing. Uh, Zoe came home from work yesterday. A couple things happened yesterday, and this is always confirming to me, but Zoe came home from work. She goes, oh, she goes, today at work, you know, I'm talking with all my coworkers, and you know, they're, they're not believers, I'm talking with my coworkers, and um, they were talking about t politics and this and that, and then all of a sudden, it changed, and one of the... Um, I believe she's one of the managers, but she started talking, you know, that her daughter recently came out and said she was a homosexual, you know, was talking about this, and she was like, everyone, she was, just because you say that doesn't mean um, that's what you are, you know, that that, everyone just wants to say I'm this and I'm that, and, you know, so she's talking about all this, and then she says, no one knows who they are anymore, you know, and she's going, no one knows who they are anymore. Zoe's just sitting there listening, going, this is very interesting. Everyone is confused. And then she said, and this hit me so hard, and how people are going to find out, I don't know how. That's what she said. How people are going to find out, I don't know how. And I, I sat there and I went, oh, I know how. You know, like the, the, the light comes on and I'm, I'm going, yes, Lord, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. One day the Lord told me that when I was going into, to talk, going into Walmart and was about to go talk to someone. And he said, you have beautiful feet. I went, who? <laughs> I kind of laughed because you know how he said it. And then that verse came. And I was like, yeah, you are right, Lord. And we are, we are his messengers. And so people are beginning to awaken to this. We're beginning to awaken. He said that this next year, one of the things he has said is that this year will be the year of the yes of his people first, right? We always look, oh, bring people in, bring people in, God. Yes, we want to bring people in. But we need to say yes and begin to do what God has called us to do and begin to, to come to the knowledge of the truth that we are a people that are redeemed. We're redeemed. That's something he highlighted in all of this is that um, that's one truth. Now, there's going to be many more things 
that, that are going to be unfolding. I, wanna, I wanted to tell you everything all at once. You know, I was going, oh, God, we're going to share this and this. And he goes, no, we're just going to stay with the awakening, that I'm awakening people, and that the first truth that they need to know is that they're redeemed. You need to know you're redeemed. And you need to know what redemption means. My husband's been talking about this, and he's been describing this. But Jesus, as our kinsman redeemer, we need to know that and have it so set on who we are. We're not part of the confused, right? We're not confused. No. Because we have the word of God. We have the word and the spirit working together. In 1 John 4, I think it's 1 John 4, but it says, uh, it, it's somewhere in 1 John, it talks about the spirit, the anointing that abides in us, tells us the truth and it is not a lie. You have no need that any man teach you. The spirit that abides in you leads you in all truth. And we have the word, the word and the spirit working together. And the word is living and active. Don't ever believe when you start to pick up the word and you go to it, and the enemy starts adding things, you know, before you go. You declare out loud, this word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. This, this word is God-breathed. Satan, get out of here. You're trying to tell me that, oh, yeah, that doesn't really work. Oh, blah, blah, blah. No. Shut up in the name of Jesus. And then you go forth in the truth. And we're going to walk in the truth. So I'm going to have, um, check the time here. Um, I'm going to have Don uh, run this video about redemption. Um, and then after that, I'm going to read Isaiah 62. And then we'll go ahead and close. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the universe and all that we know or will ever know. God created life, the plants and animals, and at the pinnacle of his creation, he formed and breathed into us the breath of life. And man became a living soul. God designed us not merely for utilitarian or environmental purpose, but we were specially created by God in His image for the purpose of having a relationship with Him. Mankind was designed to be with Him and enjoy Him. In that perfect relationship, we experienced pure, unconditional love. We were complete and whole without shame, regret, or fear of any kind. Everything was good because we were with him and he was with us. We were gods. We belonged to him. We were his precious possession, his masterpiece, and God was our everything. He was our inexhaustible source of complete fulfillment. We needed nothing but him. God loved us and we were created to love God. But God in his unlimited understanding knew that love is a choice. So he created us with a will, the ability to love him, to choose him. And in one dreadful moment, we chose to listen to a lie. We chose to reject God and handle things on our own. That decision destroyed our connection with God, and in that singular moment, the relationship was broken. The only name that could resolve this relationship is the beautiful, wonderful, powerful name of Jesus. Separation is an awful reality, and no separation is more devastating than the separation each of us experience as a result of sin. God, by His very nature, is completely perfect, holy, and just. 
and we are not. Although He created us and we were His, because of sin, we are separated from Him. When our actions are held against God's standard of absolute perfection and holiness, we all fall short. Regardless of the good works we do, we are still left with the insurmountable gap of our own imperfection. This wall of sin we have constructed brick by brick divides us from God, and it leaves us desperate, hopeless, broken, guilty, and alone, utterly unable to reconcile ourselves. But God, who is without apology, absolutely just, is also without reservation, absolutely love. And he would not stand for this divide. God, who is rich in mercy, could not stand idly by and allow his creation to be separated from him forever without providing a choice, a way back to him. He had made us, we were his. We rejected him, we were lost. But God would provide a means of redemption so that we could be his again. God's justice demanded that the overwhelming debt of our sin be paid for. The wages of sin is death. There was only one sacrifice, holy, complete, and perfect enough to satisfy that unfathomable payment, the perfect, holy, sinless Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus, God in the flesh, was sent to earth, born of a virgin. He lived a perfectly sinless, holy life. He walked among us and taught us how to love, how to forgive, and how to live. After a 33-year demonstration of his greatness, he was captured and beaten. And in obedience to God's eternal plan, he was nailed to a cross to make payment for our redemption. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. His death, the payment for our life. But the reconciling story of Jesus does not end at the hill called Calvary. Three days later, early on a Sunday morning, Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, rose from the grave, the supreme demonstration of His power and His deity. Jesus lives. He lives today, and the sacrifice he made 2,000 years ago still provides the one and only opportunity for salvation for all that will choose him and him alone. We were his. We were lost. But through Jesus Christ, we can be his again. Good news, isn't it? <clears throat> really good news. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Isaiah 62, this is um, something that the Lord gave along with what, what I've been sharing that confirms his word. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate. And if you go on and, and continue to read this, Isaiah 62, in your, in your time with the Lord, and seek him on this, um, 
it's so rich, it's so good. But at the very end, it says, in verse 12, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. And that is the word of the Lord. For us, we, have already, we already have received this as believers, those of you who have said yes to Jesus. This is our reminder. Again, we need to remind each other. We need to stir each other up on a daily basis and, and exhort and remind and speak truth. Every opportunity we get, speak truth. But especially to those who do not know. There's many who do not know around us, just as that girl said. I don't know. She said, I don't know. And so I'm just so thankful for what God has done, that he's redeemed me, that he's redeemed you, that he's redeemed all of us. Let's go ahead and stand. I'm going to pray over all of you. How many of you receive this word today? You receive it by faith. Yep, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you so much for your word that it is living and active. Father, I thank you when your word goes forth, it will produce that which you have meant it to produce, Lord. Right now, I ask, Lord, that as these seeds were sown today, that you would protect the word, Lord. You would protect this word in people's hearts and that they would also cooperate with you to protect that word and not allow the enemy to come immediately and snatch it out. I declare that this word will produce fruit in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, and I thank you, Lord, that every person, as they leave today, that they will have received something from you, that they are not leaving empty. Not one person will leave empty today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in us. I thank you for truth that is exploding on the inside of our spirit. As your word was spoken today in many different ways throughout the service, even as we worshiped, Lord, I thank you for the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lead and guide us today in truth. Lord, I ask that you would expose every lie even throughout this day, even today, Lord, that you would show people their, the lies that they have believed that are not you. And Lord, that we would get so hungry to, to just dig into your word and ask you, God, show me the truth. I don't want to settle in this area. I don't want to just go off of what my granddad told me in this area that, that I'm sensing that is not correct. I thank you, Father, that we're going to go where you've called us to go. And we're going to do what you've called us to do. And I thank you, Father, for a great harvest in Ashtabula County and the surrounding areas. God, I thank you right now that you are awakening people. Use us, God. Use us, God. We say yes to you. And Lord, even today, set opportunities in front of us and help us to be bold. God, I just speak that boldness over every person. And I break the fear of man that tries to come at people. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will give us the words to say. And you'll be right there. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All of you have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming today. It was good to see you all. Bless you. Oh, yes, and I'm sorry. One last thing. Prayer tonight at 6. We are still having prayer from 6 to 7.